um, on the news feed saying that excess choline can cause. Yeah, no, it's garbage. Absolute garbage. Yeah, I have. It's all associational. It's associational. It's because it's again the reason is the high foods in with choline are eggs. And so you know what they mean. Oh, and remember the old guy outlived his parents, 25 eggs a day on average. That guy must have been clotting like mad. It's just nonsense, absolute nonsense. Again, it's all this cholesterol myth. That's all it is. It's just garbage. Associational research. It's not clinical, proper, experimental, where you just give eggs to someone. Well, we had a case study, this 88-year-old back in 96, 1996. Absolutely no issue. No high triglycerides, no high, um, even had low LDL because you were seeding so much cholesterol, his body was synthesizing less. So there wasn't even, a, you know, he was actually, they, they were saying, why is this happening to this person? Well, because crackpots don't understand. But their, this case study was actually, you know, how many people do such a high cholesterol diet to show quite clearly that the opposite happens? Yes. Because if it's coming around in the holomicrons, it doesn't need to go via the VLDL pathway, which it ends up with a lot of LDL. That's why when you do a low carbohydrate diet or a keto diet or whatever, eating a lot of fat, but not consuming a lot of cholesterol, your body will actually generate more triglycerides and VLDL in and push it out as energy and circulate it around and add the extra cholesterol to be that's been endogenously produced in the liver. And then you end up with these numbers. But as long as, as, long as the LDL is not oxidized, who cares? But if you get it in the diet and it's going through the collar microns, you'll get less export out of these other um, uh, lipoproteins. It's like these trucks are going around, giving the energy away and the cholesterol. If you're getting it from the diet and you're getting it for the, why produce more and send it out? You're going to produce less. And that's why... You know, and even Dave Feldman now he's falling into the trap of this, um, the carb trap for whatever reason. Again, reductionism, even though he understood that this movement of energy, because he's got an APOE of 4.4, he rapidly takes in the colomicron remnants and produces more LDL as a consequence. But that's because he's one of the hyper responders, which is about four, four and a half, five percent of the population. You can't extrapolate from that for everyone. And it's actually because you, the, it's actually the opposite. The whole reason is when people in the interglacial periods of 200,000 years ago and about 100,000 years ago, these genetic changes happened in those periods of APOE 3.3 and 2.2, specifically because these people had more access to carbs for a number of thousands of years. And as a consequence, they had to uh, make these adjustments because they had to stop the fat that was coming in from the food supply getting into the liver because you didn't want too much fat at the same time as there's a lot of sugar in the liver from these other foods. And it was actually a protective mechanism. But that meant that, you know, that those people tend to show much lower LDL, C. But these guys are hyper responders who are, have the old ancient genes of APOE44 they suck it in because that's how they designed to suck it in immediately and re-export it because their diet was primarily made of fat, not sugar. So they had to take it in. The liver, you know, um, you know, just that's why these people suffer fatty liver and all sorts of issues and engage the Randall cycle much easier. It, they have to do the exact opposite. It's again not understanding how the system's working. You know, where the people with a APOE of 2.2 or 3.3 three, three can tolerate slightly more carbs, where these guys can't tolerate any. They've got the back, back to front, the whole understanding. It's ridiculous. Again, due to reductionist thinking. It's, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be laughable.